Marie, can I have that information for Mr. Rashid's group? He'll be here in a few minutes. I'm working as fast as I can. Mr. Evans will be with you very soon. That's fine. I'm a little early, aren't I? Just a few minutes. Is your last name pronounced LePage? It's LePage, actually. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Now, is it Ms. LePage or Mrs. LePage? Um, it's Ms. But you can call me by my first name. Do you mind if I call you Ms. LePage? I love the way it sounds. <laughs> that's fine. I'm keeping you from your work, aren't I? I'm sorry. I'd love to talk, but I really have to get this done right away. I understand. You're not from here, are you? Excuse me? Your accent. You come from France, don't you? Yes. Paris, actually. That's nice. It sure is a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Can I have that information? I'm not quite done. What's taking so long? <laughs> Mrs. Beatty, I can take you to Mr. Evans' office. He'll be here shortly. Why, thank you. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Paul. We have our first group from India coming next week. Mm -hmm. Since Mr. Rashid has traveled to India many times, I've asked him to talk to you about etiquette in India. Mr. Rashid. Paul, why don't you greet me as if I were an Indian tourist? Ask me to come with you and show me to the tour bus. Okay. Uh, hi there. I'm Paul. Oh, if I were an Indian woman, you would have just insulted me. Women and men generally do not touch. Okay. Uh, hi there. You just told me to go away. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, too close. You should stand this far away from someone. Instead of shaking hands, do this and say, Namaste. Namaste. Excellent. Now, tell me to come with you to the tour bus. Okay, come with me. This is a rude gesture in India. Do it like this. Come with me. Good, good. To the bus over there. I know, I just insulted you. <laughs> Pointing with your fingers is considered impolite. Use your chin instead. To the bus over there. I'm never going to get this. So you're doing wonderful. Oh, thank you, Mr. Oh, too close. <laughs> Let's get Ms. Novak's tickets ready. She may be stopping by this afternoon. Paul, are you okay? No. I feel awful. What's wrong? I've got this horrible cold. I'm sneezing. And my back is killing me. I've got this pain at my hip. My neck's been bothering me all day. And I have a stomach ache. You may have to go see a doctor. No. I hate doctors. I wonder what could be wrong. Maybe he's allergic to work. <laughs> I'm not kidding here. I'm in pain. I used to want to be a doctor, you know. Say, ah. Ah, <laughs> Now I remember why I didn't become a doctor. Oh. Paul, you really must get some medical help. A little acupuncture might help you feel better. Stay away from me. Dr. Anderson is meeting Mr. Evans downstairs in the cafe. Should we ask her to come up? She may be able to help. Great idea. I'll go get her. You might prefer an herbal remedy? <laughs> Stop it. How long have you been feeling this way? Oh, I got the cold last night, and the pain in my back started this morning. Want to try a little spiritual <laughs> healing? You're making me laugh. <laughs> a laughter's the best oh, medicine, you know. Oh, oh, but it hurts. Say ah. Cover your face, Doc. <laughs> Well, you have a cold, that's for sure. What about the other stuff, the pain in the back and the side? Well, have you taken any medications lately? Just some over-the-counter stuff. Uh, 
painkiller, cold tablets, uh, nasal spray. Well, that sounds okay. And some uh, cough medicine, vitamins, and acid. That's a lot of medicine. And some uh, decongestant. That's too much medicine in one day. That must be why you're feeling so bad. <laughs> Have you been around anyone else who's sick? Uh, my friend Donna's had a cold all week. We lifted weights last night for about an hour, and ran five miles. He had to walk the last mile. Is that your usual exercise routine? Yep. I started it yesterday. <laughs> well, that explains it. You exercised too much. That's all? That's all. A little chiropractic treatment might help you. Uh, stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> now, about the travel documents for the Australian group. We've had everything mailed to them, right? Mr. Evans, we gave you the package of travel documents to give to Mr. Wells the other night at dinner before he flew home to Sydney. A white envelope about this big? Yes. I gave it to Mr. Rashid before he left for Lebanon. Oh. Mr. Wells needs those documents the day after tomorrow. His group is flying in on, on Thursday. I'll call the courier. If they can pick up a package by 5 p.m., we should be okay. That gives us an hour. I'll reprint the tour information, but what about the travel guides? I can't print 25 copies that fast. I'll call copies to go and have them reprint the travel guides. They can't do a rush job. Call Harper's instead. They're faster and much more reliable. Okay. Hello? National Express. I need to get a package to Australia ASAP. If Harper's can't make the color copies that fast, we'll take black and white. Bob, are you reprinting the tickets? Yep. Hello. I need to get 25 color documents printed right away. Yes, it's very much a hurry. Who are you calling, Mr. Evans? What's that? Oh, uh, my tailor. Your tailor? These sleeves are too long. They're driving me crazy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for fixing my mistake with Mr. Wells. Now, I've asked Cheryl to plan a party for his group next Friday, and I'd like for everyone to help. Cheryl, do you have a plan? Yes, I do. Marie. I'd like to have you choose the restaurant for the party. I'd love to. Bob, I'll let you choose the menu. You will? Mm -hmm. Paul, could you plan the music? Yes. Good. Now, Marie, I called ten restaurants and had them give us a price for a party room. These two had the best prices. <laughs> the green room is a nice restaurant. Great. That's my favorite, too. Now, Bob, about the food. I was thinking steak and potatoes well, and... Well, the client asked for fish or chicken. So, I had the restaurant put together a menu with each. Which do you like better? I like chicken more than fish, I guess. Great. Chicken it is. Now, Paul. Let me guess. So you have a list of music choices. <laughs> yes. These look fine. Great. I think we're all done. You see how easy it is to plan something when we do it all together. <laughs> so glad we could help. Another wonderful dinner, Cheryl. Thank you. You're welcome. I really enjoy cooking, actually. When I was young, I thought I was going to be a chef. You could be a chef. These cookies are fantastic. Why didn't you become a chef? My mother talked me out of it. She thought I would always have to work at night. She was afraid I would never meet a man and get married. She was probably right. If you were a chef, you wouldn't have met Bob. How do you know? Before he met you, Bob only ate fast food. <laughs> It's true. Your mother must have been very happy when you and Bob got engaged. She was. Hey, you'll never guess what Bob was going to be. Cheryl. A rock musician. Uh, basketball player? No. Bob was going to be a dancer. He was actually in the state ballet when he was young. 
No kidding. You never told me this. I could have been a great dancer. What made you change your mind? The diet was too hard. I had to stop eating everything. Chocolate cake, fried chicken, potato chips. I tried. I might have been able to do it. But then they said, no more bread and butter. <laughs> bread and butter, can you believe it? And that was the end. Wow, Bob. I never knew. Do you enjoy watching ballet at all? I can't. I'd like to. But as soon as the music starts, I get very, very... hungry. <laughs> what about you, Mr. Evans? What did you think you were going to be when you were younger? If I tell you, will you try not to laugh? Of course. I always thought I would have my own television program to talk about etiquette. I didn't know you were so interested in etiquette. I have always loved etiquette. I think I would have made a great television etiquette teacher. Well, I think you could still do it. It's perfect for you. Really? Why? Well, you're very polite, for one thing. You always know which fork to use at a restaurant? That's a real talent. <laughs> You've taught me a lot about the customs of other cultures. Maybe I could still give it a try. <laughs> Today's topic, dinner conversation. If your international guests look offended and are leaving the table early, you've probably chosen a topic that's taboo in their home country. Find out what's acceptable and what's not. Coming up on International Etiquette with Evans. What do you think? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Unforgettable. You have a real talent, all right? <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I didn't know that planning a wedding would be so hard. Mm. Marie, could you give us your opinion on a few things? I'd love to. First, how many people should we invite? Bob wants a small wedding. Uh, Twenty guests would be nice. I want a large wedding. About... 300 people. 300? <laughs> Yesterday you said 200. I have a lot of relatives who want to come. Then there's the location. I always thought I'd get married in a park or at the beach. That's so romantic. I would like to get married indoors, where I won't get wet if it's raining. That makes sense. I prefer traditional music in the ceremony. Contemporary music. I'd like a long ceremony and a short reception. I want a short ceremony and a huge celebration afterwards. I want a white cake. And I want... A chocolate cake. I know. How are we ever going to agree on this? Don't hurt yourself. Here's an idea that might work. Plan a wedding that's big enough to include all of Cheryl's family... Sorry, Bob. In the park on Oak Street that has that building where you can go if it rains. You can have traditional music in the ceremony and contemporary music at the party. And you could have two cakes at the reception, one white and one chocolate. Sounds okay to me. Me too. Hey, we did it! Oh, yay! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Marie, thank you so much. You're amazing. We couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Hi. Lunch time is over. Are you coming up to the office? I'm too tired to go back to the office. Planning a wedding is hard work. I need a holiday. <laughs> Uh, 
Let's make today a holiday. We'll tell Mr. Evans we can't come back to work. That's a great idea. What are we celebrating? You're getting married. How about National Wedding Day? What happens on National Wedding Day? I don't know. Why am I the one who has to think of it? Why don't we make it National Singles Day instead? All the married people give gifts to their single friends. <laughs> no, buying gifts is hard work. I want to enjoy myself on our new holiday. What about a red day? Everybody wears red clothes, and there's dancing in the street that goes on all night. How about National? Buy your friend another cup of coffee. <laughs> nice try. How about National On Time Day? What happens on National On Time Day? You remind one another to come back to work on time. <laughs> Happy holiday. Waitress. So, Mrs. Beatty, you're looking for an exciting place for your next vacation. I usually travel to major cities in Europe, but this time I want to go someplace different, someplace away from the city, as long as it's safe. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ah, how about California? The Big Sur area is spectacular. California has lots of earthquakes, doesn't it? Well, they have earthquakes occasionally, but not very often. But it does have earthquakes. Yes. I'm not going. Okay. How about some place in Asia, a beach in Thailand? Kochang has beautiful beaches, and it's very quiet there. A quiet beach sounds nice, but they said on the news there's a monsoon in Thailand. <laughs> but the monsoon will be over by the time you go. What else can you recommend? Australia. The Australian outback is amazing. I've heard they have tornadoes in Australia. <laughs> Some parts. Where else? Jamaica? Hurricanes. South Africa? Floods. Hawaii? Landslide. You know a lot about natural disasters, don't you, Mrs. Beatty? Let's see. What about Finland? Finland? It's wild, beautiful, and very different from other parts of Europe, and nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Finland sounds good. I'll go to Finland. <laughs> Great. I'll book your tickets. Okay, I just booked your tickets to Helsinki, Finland. You'll be staying at the Palace Hotel. That's great. Excuse me, Mr. Evans. Yes, Marie. Mr. Woods is on the phone. He told me to tell you it's urgent. Urgent? He's traveling, you know. Yes. He said there's some kind of epidemic. What kind of epidemic? It sounds like it's that new influenza. But he was vaccinated for that before he left. I know, but he told me to tell you that he wants to fly home today. On the internet, it says only three people are sick. That is not an epidemic, and it's not like anybody's dying from this flu. He said he didn't want to be the first. <laughs> Where is he traveling? May I ask? He's in Finland. Finland? I just booked tickets to Finland. Mrs. Beatty, everything will be fine. You'll get vaccinated, and you'll have nothing to worry about. I'm not going to Finland. You told me nothing bad ever happens in Finland. Mrs. Beatty, I can't think of anywhere in the world you can go and be completely safe. Right here in this city, you could go outside and get hit by a bus. But you can't let that stop you from doing the things you want to do. <laughs> Look, why don't we go to lunch? And we'll talk it over. I don't think she's going anywhere. Hello, 
Hello, Bob. Dining alone? Uh, Paul and Marie went to get newspapers. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, please, sit down. May I ask what you're reading? Um, <laughs> a history of the world. It's a bestseller. I'm very impressed. Reading nonfiction over lunch. I hear that it's a very difficult book. Uh, no, it's, it's a pretty easy read. I, I can't put it down, actually. <laughs> a real page turner, huh? Do you think I could borrow it when you're done? Sure. I usually prefer fiction myself. You know, thrillers, mysteries. There's nothing like curling up with a good science fiction novel, is there? <laughs> you read science fiction, too? <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Are you learning a lot from your book? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, tell me what you're reading about right now. Um, this part is about Great Britain. Really? Do you mind if I take a look? <laughs> Cheryl hates when I read comics. Then I can understand why you can't put the book down. <laughs> you think that I could borrow it then? Well, I'm still reading this one, but I have another one I can loan you. I meant this one. <laughs> oh. Help yourself. Look at this. The paper says that a tornado carried a woman for 300 miles and she lived to tell about it. I'm not sure if you know this, but that story isn't true. It's in the paper. It must be true. That paper is trash. I can't believe you're reading it. What do you mean? <laughs> it's fiction. It's not news. Nothing in there is true. If you want real news, you have to read this paper. That paper is boring. This one's much more interesting. Woman gives birth to cow. Man builds house from bread. Baby with two heads? Come on, this is offensive. Storm kills 100 in Texas. Train accident kills five, injures more. Man kills wife and son. I'm sorry, but all that death and destruction is pretty offensive to me. I know that these things happened, and I know that those didn't. You don't know that. You just assume that it's true. Let's ask Bob and Mr. Evans what paper they read. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just read. That sounds good to me. Look at this. A man with four legs. <laughs> what are those wacky glasses you're wearing? These are ultra high tech, top of the line, state of the art, cutting edge TV glasses. And you're actually watching TV right now? Yeah, right here in the corner. What are you watching? The basketball game. Unbelievable. And Cheryl doesn't mind this? Yes! What? Sorry. My team's winning. This new invention doesn't bother you. Are you kidding? If I'd known how happy they would make him, I would have bought those glasses for Bob long ago. Technology today is amazing. You know... I wish they'd invent something that would make people who talk on cell phones quieter. This guy in the cafe today was so loud I couldn't hear myself talking. <laughs> it wasn't funny. What? Oh, sorry. I was laughing at this guy on TV. <laughs> if I could invent something, it would be a thing for Bob's car that would automatically charge him when he goes over the speed limit. He drives so fast sometimes, but he'd slow down if he had to pay. No! Is your team losing? No! I heard what you said. You just leave my car alone. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, Paul. Wait till you see what I've got. What is it? Well, I have this problem with my cell phone. Whenever I'm traveling with a group, I can never hear it ring or feel it vibrate. So I got this thing that lets me know whenever my phone is ringing. How does it do that? It buzzes me. Buzzes? You know, bzz, bzz. so uh, I could feel it. Does it work? I don't know. No one's called me yet. Oh. Ow! What? <laughs> Someone's calling me. Oh. Ow! Hello? Hello? No one's there. Wow. That was a big buzz. That almost hurt. Maybe it isn't working right. No, it's working fine. Ooh. Ow! Oh! Another phone call. Hello? Hello? That's strange. Man, if I ever get used to that, I'll always know whenever my phone is ringing. Oh! I would take that thing back to the store before you hurt yourself. I'm going. I'll see you later. I hope he can drive okay. He'll be fine. How do you know? I'll stop calling him. Did you see the politicians expect to raise taxes again? Really? What does the government decide to spend our money on now? They're planning to build a stronger military. It's wrong to spend so much on the military. They should spend it on education instead. Can we please avoid discussing politics? Why? Every time we begin talking about politics, people get mad at each other. They should spend more money on fighting corruption. If they were able to stop corrupt officials, maybe they wouldn't need to raise our taxes. That's true, but I think we need to spend more money on the military. Without a strong military, the world won't be very safe. That's one way to look at it, but maybe the world would be safer and better if we tried to eliminate poverty. What do you think, Cheryl? I think that if I say what I really think, you'll get all mad and call me crazy or ridiculous. Cheryl, don't be so afraid. We're only talking. I think that the government should spend more money on cooking schools. <laughs> what? Most people don't know how to cook well. I think the government should help teach them. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Are you crazy? Use our taxes to pay for cooking school. <laughs> of course not. But look at you. You're all mad at me. This is why I never discuss politics with friends. But don't let me stop you from getting mad at each other. <laughs> Paul, I never knew you were so conservative. I'm not conservative. Sure you are. You always seem to want things to be just like they used to be. That's not conservative. That's just smart. <laughs> Thanks. That's the definition of conservative. Really? Well, I didn't know you were so radical. What makes you think I'm radical? You always want to change everything. No, I don't. I just want our government to realize that it's the 21st century and they need new ways of doing things. Thank you. That sounds radical to me. Bob, tell him I'm not a radical. She's not a radical. She's a liberal, like me. I wouldn't call you a liberal. Oh, really? I'd say you're more of a moderate. You're always in the middle. If I want to be a liberal, I'll be a liberal. <laughs> Thank you, honey. 
You can be whatever you want. You just can't be one thing and call it something else. Listen to you. You're like a little dictator. I studied politics in school. I know something about the definition of political beliefs. Is that so? So, what is Cheryl? A radical, moderate, conservative? Who knows? She's not saying. Cheryl, what are you? Would you mind telling us that much? Okay. You want to know what I believe? I believe... I believe... I believe these are the best chips I have ever tasted. <laughs> Everyone, we'd like to ask your opinion about something. What is that? We're trying to decide where to go on vacation after the wedding for our honeymoon. We thought you might be able to help us decide on a location. An excellent idea. Where are you thinking of going? Well, Bob doesn't really like to travel, so he's agreed to go wherever I want to go. As long as the hotel has nice bathrooms and a TV. That sounds fair. What's your first choice? I've always wanted to go to Cozumel off the Yucatan Peninsula. Cozumel is spectacular. The island itself is pretty flat, but the beaches are beautiful and the ocean is so blue. Aren't there too many sharks to go swimming there? No. It's very safe. What? Oh, but it's somewhat overrated. You just said... What else are you thinking of? What about Tierra del Fuego in the south of Argentina and Chile? The scenery is extraordinary. The, the mountain ranges and national parks are breathtaking. Mm. But in June, won't it be too dark to do very much? No, plenty of people go there in June to go skiing or... But, of course, it's probably not romantic enough for a honeymoon. I've heard the jungles and rainforests in Malaysia are a must-see. They're so lush. <laughs> of course, some people feel that the scorpions make it too dangerous to hide. <laughs> we could go to that hotel on Grant Street along the river stay in town for our honeymoon well I heard the rooms have really nice bathrooms and big televisions <laughs> no. Cheryl you once told me that you wanted to go to Tahiti that's right I forgot about that you would love Tahiti one of the most beautiful places on earth. And very, very romantic. Mm. Really? You all think Tahiti is a good idea? I think you'd love it. It's too expensive. How expensive? Well, do you remember how much Mr. Rashid's vacation to Tahiti cost? Yes, I do. He traveled cheaply. Oh. Well, that's it. I'm out of ideas. I guess we'll go someplace boring. We weren't going to tell you until a couple months from now, but Paul, Marie, and I were talking, and we thought a vacation in the South Pacific would be perfect. I just wish we could afford it. So, we decided that as our wedding gift to you, we'd like to send you to Tahiti, all expenses paid. You're kidding! Oh. We booked your flights and a hotel on the southern coast for two weeks. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you! But the... And the hotel room has a spectacular bathroom <laughs> and a TV this big. I don't know how to thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much! Oh, <laughs> I'm so 
so excited. <laughs> and this one, voice sound with vibration here. D, D. Okay, let's talk about uh, how to make the T sound first. Um, basically, remember they are the same. Like the way to make this sound are the same. Just difference here is voice or unvoiced, vibration or no vibration, right? Um, to make this sound, you have to put your the tip of your tongue right behind your upper teeth, like this, uh, right behind here, okay? And then press your two teeth together and then make a corrosive sound, like a drum beat between the two teeth here. You will feel that this airflow is strong and dry and quick, okay? 